Hello everyone, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries and today I'd like to put the hex on NX, meaning I'd like to show you some really cool math associated with uh, putting hex patterns on things. Hex patterns, very common. And so where we start today is with a hexagon and we have a dimension A, that's the uh, dimension from flat to flat. We have dimension B, that's the dimension in between the hex patterns, whether you're doing in this direction or that direction. And we have the fact that the um, side of the hexagon is uh, 30 degrees or 60 degrees, uh, depending on your frame of reference. Um, so once we have, we've established A and B, we now know that the distance between this center and this center is this hypotenuse distance right here. Um, that's A plus B because you've got half of A, you've got B, you've got half of A. And so C equals A plus B times the cosine of 30. Um, and D equals A plus B times the sine of 30. Then we also know that the distance between this point right here and this point right here is D times 2. So once we know all of that, we can now create a model and we can just manipulate that model with the um, different uh, parameters that we type in. And so to show you that, let us uh, go and create one. So I would suggest if you're going to do something like this, you create some nice expressions. My first expression will be A, and arbitrarily I'm going to make it um, 5. And my next expression, that's B, that's the spacing in between the... Um, the hexes is for this little example is going to be uh, 0.5 and I'm sure uh, most of you know this but um, it is really powerful to go now into the comment section of the expressions ed editor and say this is the spacing between the hexes and that's really nice that you could comment and spacing between the flats. I'm sure I kind of mangled the spelling. I just wanted to give you an idea. Okay, so next thing I want to do is the spacing in between the centers, this, the spacing in the horizontal direction. So I'm going to make a new expression and call it C. And I'm going to say that C equals A plus B uh, in parentheses times uh, the cosine COS of 30 degrees. And you know, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to put a slash slash and I'm going to say the spacing between the hex centers. And when I hit enter, as you can see, the, um, the uh, comment goes into the little comment space. Now, why is this complaining? Let's see if I hit apply, it's okay. Uh, next, I have the D variable and that is A plus B times the sine of 30. So we type it in D and then we say in parentheses, A plus B, right paren, star, sine of 30, close. There we go. So we've got our A, our B, our C, our D. And we'll say OK. Next, we simply sketch where we want. Full sketch. Uh, there we go. We say OK. And we go into the more and we find the polygon pattern. And we make sure it says six. We put it up there. We put a horizontal reference on one of the uh, faces. Good. And then we need a dimension. So the dimension from flat to flat is indeed A. I'm going to put an A space. Makes it a little easier for me to type it in. Good. And um, and finish. With this little um, shape, uh, I can now go into the uh, pattern geometry. And uh, you may be wondering why I uh, don't pattern it in the sketch. And um, I find that the uh, pattern geometry has more options than um, the pattern in the sketch. The pattern in the sketch does not have 
the along function that doesn't have the general. As a matter of fact, let's just go back to the sketch for a second. Here we go. And we'll go to the pattern feature. And you can see the pattern feature um, in the sketcher doesn't even have the symmetric uh, count. So that's what I want. I want it to, I want to do a symmetric pattern. So I go home, I go pattern geometry, I select the curves, and then um, I go right into the linear creation tool. I specify vector. There's going to be the X axis and my um, X axis is dictated by the letter C. So I just put a C in there. Look, it remembers it from the last time I did it. So there's C and um, I'll have three of these with a symmetric distance. Uh, next, I'll go to direction two. There's direction two and direction two will be dictated by D times two with a, uh, with a um, stagger. I can stagger in direction one or direction two. I've just got to select the one that's right. And as you can see, I now have a nice little swatch, if you will. Um, I think I'd like it longer. So in the X direction, I'm going to put um, four of these doodads like that. Whoops, that's wrong. Um, I meant to go the other way. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I meant to go here. There we go. So let's do six of those and say, OK. All right, we're cooking with gas here, cooking with gas. Now I want to make a patch um, of this stuff, and I'm going to extrude um, a nice little rectangle uh, right off this top uh, view. And I'm going to put a rectangle that goes from that center whoops, to that center. Okay, let's do this again. So I'm going to put a dimension from there to there. And that's going to be, again, the uh, B. That's the um, distance between these two. And I'm going to do it again here from there to there. It's going to be B. And for reasons that will become obvious in just a moment, I'm going to put a midpoint constraint. Midpoint between there and there. And I'm going to put a midpoint between there and there. So there you go. So now I'm going to say finish. And I'm going to extrude that, let's say half an inch. Say OK. Cool. Um, next, um, I'm going to be a little lazy here. I'm going to make a dimension with my analysis tool, it's a measurement dimension. And I want to measure uh, associatively the distance between that edge there and that edge there. It happens to be 47.6314. Um, and I'm going to say OK to this. And I've made a measurement dimension. And if I go to the expressions editor, I can tell that that is p26 and i'm just going to change its name to length and you'll see why in just a moment p26 okay so now i've got a length and i'm going to continue by extruding um, these infer curves i'm going to grab all of the um all of the curves that i've patterned plus i'm going to select this guy too and I'm cutting them through my little plate. OK, good. So now finally, I want to curve this. I want to um, make four of them and uh, unite them together um, to, to form my ring. So now I'm going to do a sketch on this face here. Like that. And this sketch is going to consist of a line that looks like this. OK. And it's going to consist of uh, a line that looks like this, an arc that looks like this, a line that looks like this, like that, and, and some constraints. So the constraints are, I want the circle center to be coincident with these two little line segments. I want these two little points to be on the same uh, horizontal height. I want a perpendicularity between these two. 
like that. I want a midpoint between uh, this one and this one. If you don't know why I'm doing this, you'll see in just a moment. I want some tangency between there and there. Good. I want the length of this line to be always the same length that I measured from edge to edge. And so I measured that and I called it length. So I could type in LE and it finds that for me. It's a measurement dimension. Awesome. And I also want, um, for reasons that'll become obvious in a moment, this chord length to also be LE or length. So I'm going to insert a dimension and that's a perimeter dimension. The perimeter dimension forces uh, arcs to be the right chord length, or even if you have an arc line, arc line, or you know a bunch of entities, doesn't work on splines. Um, okay, so now I want to put this line, or I should say this point of this line, right in the middle here, and I'm setting this up to do some global shaping. So I want this point to be in the middle of this. And I want point on curve. I want that point to be on that curve there. Beautiful. And fit. Let's see if everything is accomplished. Yep, that line goes all the way. No matter what I do to the pattern, um, that line's going to go all the way to where I want. And let's just test it out real quick. If I should change A, and I could do that by going to the, into the user expressions, and I make A smaller, Everything should shrink, and it does. And if I make a larger, like uh, six, then everything expands. That's the way I wanted it. Beautimus, beautimus. Okay, so next, I want to go to the surface more and global shaping. This is my favorite command. One of my favorite commands in the whole program. Oh, wait, before I do that, I'm going to do one more thing. And then I'm going to put a datum axis at the end point of here and parallel to the y-axis. Say so, okay, okay. Go into global shaping. And in global shaping, I'm gonna global shape, look at all the choices I have. I'm gonna global shape by curve. I'm gonna select all the bodies, all the faces of the body. I'm gonna select the base curve, which is my little line segment that is of the perfect length, like that. I'm gonna select my control curve, which is just this arc that is arcing uh, 90 degrees because I did put a perpendicularity in between those two and say okay. So now, uh oh, uh, let's see what's going on. A circular dependency detected. Hmm, let's think. I want to do something really simple because I don't want to waste your time here. Um, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try it one more time. See if this works. And I'm going to say that we need to do the global shaping. And this time we're going to keep the input sheet. So this forces us to make a new one, right? So we'll say, um, here's the body that we're changing. The base curve is this little single curve. So now we're not making a change to the input, right? So I think that's what it's having a problem with. And then we're going to say, select the curve. There's that. And say, OK. And it's happy now. And then we'll go into the delete body. And we can delete this body now. It shouldn't be a problem. Ooh, it doesn't like that. Control Z. OK, we're going we're gonna to banish it. We're going to say, <laughs> we're going to say, view, move to layer. We're going to just grab that doodad and move it to layer 61, 61, and we're going to say layer settings, and we're going to get rid of that like that. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> okay, finally, we're going to go into the uh, pattern geometry again, and we're going to select this piece of geometry to pattern. We're going to do a circular pattern. We're going to uh, pattern it about this nice little datum axis here. Uh, four times in a 360 degree um, span angle and say, okay, there's that. Uh, let's use the unite command and unite this with this, with this, with this. Say, okay. And there's our finished product. Control B. Let's select everything. Hold your finger on the shift key and click again. 
say okay it's nice and cleaned up um, let's take away the face edges so it looks better let's hit the W key to get rid of this little coordinate system and now we are in happy land let's do the true shading editor editor I like the true shading editor I think it makes things beautiful how about that ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and others okay so we've got that and uh, finally let's uh, make sure that it actually works when we start changing the parameters so for example when we change a to four we'll get a smaller one the whole thing updates it's nice when i put more spacing in between the uh hexagons like uh two inches it would change very nicely look at that so now we have a piece of geometry that we can manipulate like it's going out of style and this is what i like about nx it is so powerful um, especially with the expressions um, let's do a fit here when I do the user expressions it's particularly uh, powerful and that again is the uh, hex uh, the hex patterns or the math between between the or behind putting hex patterns on different things I probably could have uh, made the hex pattern and, and then wrapped it and done things like that so I just chose this method because it would allow me to show you the um, the uh, global shaping, which I think is incredibly powerful. But again, it's amazing um, how easily that you can uh, make complex geometry if you just uh, stop and parameterize it first, go into the expressions editor and create your expressions first like that. Just lay it out quite logically and you are able to do almost anything in NX. So, um, again, my name's Steve Samuel. Uh, the uh, website is www.designviz.com, where you can find all sorts of uh, other resources, books and such. And um, I love the feedback that you've been giving me. Thank you very much for, your, for the time that you spend with me on these things. It's um, uh, quite a privilege. And have a wonderful day.